Never follow a best-selling author with remarks. <laughs> um, those were incredibly well-prepared and beautiful, and I am going to wing it, and my brother's in the front row. Uh, I first want to just thank every single one of you for coming. Um, you could have done anything with your Monday night, and you chose to come and witness an incredibly powerful, a very upsetting, and a very important film. Uh, and I hope, for those of you who have not seen this, what you see tonight uh, is on YouTube. And it's there because after talking to my friend Cheryl Sandberg, who couldn't be here, who's an incredibly brave and powerful person who you will see in the film, they put it on YouTube because it's completely accessible to everyone, and there's no excuse for someone to not take that time to see it. When I, uh, when I met the survivors of Nova, it was at a healing camp with my brother Sam, who's here uh, in Israel. We arrived in the morning at 7 a.m., and we were at a kibbutz by 8. And we saw things that no one should ever see. Uh, we saw devastation. Unfortunately, the blood was still on the walls. The smell, we'll never forget. And then we went from those communities to the Nova Field. And we kind of expected to see what we saw, unfortunately. We, we knew this kind of evil was in the world because of our family background and the stories of the Holocaust and my grandmother being in Auschwitz, my grandfather being in Dachau, and my unfortunate experience with someone who had the same ideology as Hamas who committed a terrorist attack at one of our shows in Manchester. But when we arrived on the fourth day, we went to the Nova Healing Camp, and we saw kids 20 to 24 years old, many who had lost friends, who had witnessed the things you're going to see, who gave interviews, and they were laughing and crying and singing music and doing therapy together, writing songs. And I sat with one young lady who had lost all of her friends. She was the only survivor out of her group of friends. And she said to me, she goes, you know, you're here, you understand, but if I was out there in the world and I didn't know, maybe I would hate me too. And it was the first time on the trip where I became incredibly angry. Because what happened to those kids at a music festival, the same music festival where our families would have gone to Coachella, or Stagecoach, or Governor's Ball, it was truly a music festival, and these kids were murdered as they were running away, as they were hiding in porta potties, as they were trying to escape in cars. And the world just abandoned them. The world was quiet, the world was silent. The industry I'd given my life for 23 years wasn't saying anything. And I was confused because when we had a terrorist attack in Manchester, 22 people were killed and many more maimed and injured. And within two weeks, the entire world rallied behind us. And we threw One Love Manchester just two weeks later, which was the biggest concert in the world, broadcast on every major network, every social media site. And every artist from the entire community showed up six-hour concert with the biggest names in music. And here I was standing in front of these kids where 380 and now the total is over 400 were killed. 40 were taken hostage. It's the biggest music massacre in history and no one was saying anything. So we went on a quest to start helping and we brought the Nova Music Exhibit to New York City. Um, <laughs> this exhibit is the original tents the original cars that were burned, the lost and found, the footage that both Hamas themselves broadcasted and those kids as they were running away trying to get to their families broadcasted on their phones. And the way we put together this exhibit was very different from what happened in Tel Aviv because everyone in Israel already knew what had happened, had experienced it. But we wanted to do something here that made people understand that Nova, what happened to those kids and what happened here, what you're going to see, these were innocent people, and it is absolutely inexcusable that we as a world and as a community can't come forward and denounce this behavior. And I am glad that the special announcement, I've said it before, but we are officially opening in uh, mid-August in Los Angeles <laughs> today. October, and I can tell you there is nothing political about it. Uh, it is truly about a music festival, and the way we're doing the tickets, the same way we did in New York, two to eight dollars just to cover the process of fees, and half the time we're gonna be letting in people for free. Um, 
because we don't want to give anyone an excuse not to witness this and see themselves in their humanity. And that is kind of why I'm here today. My brother and uh, friends inv excuse me, invited me. I've seen the film, and like I said, you're all brave, and I'm honored to see this many people here to witness it on a Monday night. Sexual violence and rape should never be used in warfare, should never be used at all, and it should never be excused. Um, Unfortunately, with all the evidence, uh, God, myself, and others, the UN finally acknowledged it, but it took six months for them to say the evidence was credible. And in that time, we saw many of our own politicians deny this. And I, I want to be clear on the main reason I'm here. I always get a kick out of the fact that people think I'm here because I'm Jewish, because my family's Holocaust survivors, that's a big part of my, my, my identity. But like many of you, I've been there as a part of other you know, calls for help. And what bothers me the most and why I'm glad that there's so many from different communities here is that two things can be true. And when I teach my children, just like so many of you teach yours, empathy should not have a limit. I should mourn for your family in Gaza the same way you mourn for these people. I should want aid going into Gaza the same way I want hostages to come home. And you do not have to pick sides to have empathy and have a, you know, a seat at the table for humanity. And I think every single... So the reason I'm here is just to say, please, this is not about sides. This is about seeing your daughter. It's about seeing your mother. It's about seeing your friends. It's about seeing your sister. And speaking to others and demanding they see this film and saying no. And not letting a very loud minority divide us. Because I can assure you that we are in the majority. Uh, so with that, I want to thank you for having me. I want to thank my brother Sam for uh, inviting me to the screening and then I found out I was hosting. Was very, if you're from a Jewish family, that makes a lot of sense. Um, but uh, thank you once again for coming to see this, and you'll see a video from my friend later, but I, I can tell you that so many people uh, put a lot into this film and took a lot of risk, and uh, it means a lot that you're witnessing it. It means a lot that you're spreading it, and I hope that when you leave here, you encourage all your friends and family to go on YouTube and do the same, and thank you very much. I'm gonna get in trouble with her, I forgot something. There's one thing you told me to talk about. Anti-Semitism. <laughs> the, uh, the thing I wanna say about that is there's an underlying issue that many of your Jewish friends are going through, which is why is this issue you're about to witness actually being ignored? And you know, when we talk about anti-Semitism, all I want to offer for every single one of you out there is whether you are Jewish, whether you're Muslim, whether you're Christian, or whether you're atheist, we all know what it's like to be ignored when we're crying out for help. And the importance of this is to realize that anti-Semitism, whether you want to believe it or not, plays a role in why there is so much silence around this. But the same thing we've all learned is, you know, that golden rule. Anti-Semitism is not the only problem in this country, in our community. Islamophobia is a problem in our community. Hate, in general, is a major problem within our community that scares all of us when it comes to our children. So when we ask you to scream out against anti-Semitism, you have every right to look us back in the eye and say, scream for me as well, and we all need to start screaming for each other. Thanks. <laughs> So much, Stuart. This is so wonderful of you. Words that I will never forget. I wanted um, to introduce our friend Shaw Sandberg in a minute, but I wanted to first thank a few people for making this event really happen. And Sam, I want you to stand up, please. This is Scooter's brother, Sam. Thank you so much. For and where is Amanda? Amanda, call back, where are you? This evening would not be happening if not for Amanda. 
I don't know where you are, but thank you so much for everything. I want to thank our Committee for Justice for Women for everything you've been doing. I want to thank Ros Rostin and for everything that her staff and her team have been doing. And this evening would not happen without all these organizations coming together and making it happen. And with that, let me just say a couple of things. Cheryl Sandberg is a great voice. She's a great woman. In a world where it's so difficult for women to actually emerge, she's emerged with class and distinction and has made a huge difference in our cultural world, but also for women. She's led women to believe in themselves. And Sheryl Sandberg is actually taking the helm to making sure that this film is supported by everyone, so everyone sees it. With that, let me introduce you to Sheryl Sandberg. This has become the most important work of my life because the politics of today, the polarization we face, are making us turn a blind eye to something that should be completely obvious. Sexual assault is never okay. Sexual violence is never what should happen. Rape is never and will never be resistance. No matter what you believe should happen in the Middle East, all of us should be able to come together to condemn the sexual violence of October 7th. Instead, so many years after we established, we vow this will never happen again. And we scream after their silence. She was naked from her waist down. Bruises all over her body. <laughs> They were using sexual violence as a tool of war, of weaponizing women. They were sent with clear instructions to rape as many, to humiliate as many. We are ready for the unthinkable possibility of pregnancy. <laughs> I'm so sorry.